In 2018, for the first time in human history, a private mission will land on the surface of Mars. Let's take an inside look. Before humans can be sent to Mars, there are a number of vital technologies that need to be tested and proven to work on the Martian surface. And principally, there are two primary goals for Mars One's first mission to Mars, to demonstrate water extraction and to test solar power generation on the surface. Meet the demonstration lander. Based on the heritage from NASA's successful 2007 Phoenix mission, it will be built by Lockheed Martin in the United States and it will be accompanied by a communication satellite built by SSTL here in the UK. Now, let's take a look at what the lander consists of. There are four primary payloads, sample acquisition, water extraction, a thin film solar array demonstration, and a camera system. Each of these is respectively assigned 15 kilograms, 10 kilograms, 6 kilograms, and 5 kilograms. And in addition to these primary payloads, there will also be an educational payload, a university student designed payload, and two payload slots available for sale and each of those will be assigned two kilograms each. As you can see, most of the space on the lander is occupied by the sample acquisition experiment, which is required in order to collect and deliver samples of Martian soil to the water extraction equipment. Mars One has now formally opened up requests for proposals to the scientific community and to interested parties for each of these payloads, with a deadline of the 31st of July to receive a notification of intent. And as with any mission to Mars, planetary protection is always a key consideration, and this mission is no exception, because we can't let microbial life contaminate the Martian environment. A limit of 300 viable spores per square metre will be imposed onto the lander prior to launch by applying a mix of isopropyl alcohol and water to all of the components. But in addition to this, any components which are going to come into direct contact with liquid water as part of the water extraction experiment must be 10,000 times cleaner than this to prevent any microbial uh, prospering on the lander. And this can be accomplished by heating up the relevant components to 125 degrees Celsius for over five hours after the alcohol mix has been applied. But once the cleaning has taken place and the lander has been assembled in Denver, Colorado, it will be launched into space on either a Delta V, an Atlas IV, or a Falcon 9 rocket between May 16th and June 5th, 2018. And depending on the launch date, it will arrive at Mars between March 17th and April 15th, 2019, where it will then go into a 40 second power descent. The mission will land between 42 and 50 degrees north latitude in Eastern Utopia Planetia or Western Arcadia Planetia, which is northeast of the Elysium Mountains and northwest of Olympus Mons. There will be an error ellipse of 150 by 30 kilometres and the lander will be capable of landing on slopes inclined at up to 15 degrees. The landing site has been selected for its low altitude of minus 4 kilometres, which makes it much more hospitable because the average surface pressure is much greater and there's also a high likelihood of water ice within 0.5 metres of the surface. And during the course of the one Earth year long mission, we expect surface air temperatures to vary from around minus 100 to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Whilst operating on the surface, 2.5 megajoules or 700 watt hours of energy will be produced every Martian sol or Martian day. This is the initial figure, of course, because due to dust buildup over the course of the mission lifetime, it will inevitably drop, but this is the ballpark figure that we have to work with. Primarily, most of the mission's seven hours per Martian day's operational lifetime will be spent initially on the soil acquisition and water extraction. The mission will be considered complete when between 0.05 and 0.2 litres of water have been extracted, and that this has been demonstrated by it being captured by the camera system on board. Finally, Mars One is really eager to engage the world with this mission, so they're going to be letting the public vote on which payload proposal flies in the university design competition. In September, 
every member of the Mars One community platform will be eligible to vote on the initially submitted proposals in the university design competition. If you're interested in finding out more about the community platform, I'll post a link to that below so that you can take a look. Based on their popularity, the most popular proposals will be invited to submit a detailed technical proposal during the course of October this year, which will then be voted on again in December. Finally, Mars One will announce which proposal has won the university competition in January 2015. If you're interested in finding out more about the competition or in the technical details of each of the payload slots, I've posted links below to the competition entry form, to the payload information package and to the request for payload ideas. To keep up to date with the latest developments in the Mars One mission, be sure to subscribe as the mission moves forward into its most exciting phase to date. See you soon.